And so we turn to the second most voted target. One thing is certain. We will capture Royal Fuji as soon as it shows up next summer. We will get you, Royal. We, we will. will. Hey guys, so tonight I am not alone, I am with my friend Avo. Uh, you might remember him from the, uh, the most popular video we have on the channel, which is the uh, Stelina review. I think it's from the, the one with the most viewed. It was yeah. the one on the strip. We were doing the... We were testing out Stelina right on the parking lot, right on the strip. And it was a security guard? Yeah, the security <laughs> guard came and said, what are you guys doing? You guys can't be doing uh, professional photography. We're like, we're just taking photos of the sky. <laughs> and we showed him the image and she was like, oh, um, okay. And so she left. Yeah. Anyway, so tonight uh, he's going to image with a telescope, first light with a six inch Newtonian. So we'll see what he gets. First time, yeah. Um, and me, I'm going to shoot with the uh, SVX 130. But mainly tonight, I want to make a video about uh, shooting raw Fuji with a DSLR camera. So this one is the RA. And I'm going to use the Atlas mount with a um, dovetail here with a ball head on top. And I'm going to use a new lens, which I bought from my friend Jorge. It is the Rockinon slash Samyang uh, 135 f2, which is one of the best lenses for AP, so Astro. Um, so we'll see what the result is. And uh, yeah, we have some about 20 minutes before the sun goes down, so we're going to finish um, setting up and uh, let's see. Yeah, and. <laughs> oh, time before for the sun sets. Time for B rolls. We have some, uh, we're gonna do some B rolls with, All right. with my. B rolls camera. incoming right now. Oh. <laughs> right now. I drew the hole in an old dovetail so that I could attach a ball head to it. I then can use this on the Atlas mount and have a more stable tracking than with a small star tracker. The lens I'll be using today is a lens I've always wanted to get because it's very popular for nice sky imaging. The one I have is branded Samyang, but it is the same as the Rockinon one. It is 135mm at f2, which is incredibly fast. It feels so weird because I haven't used this hand controller in literally like 3 or 4 years. Uh, but tonight I'm going to use it just to uh, pretend to star align once because with the Atlas mount or the EQ6R you have to pretend to star align before it starts tracking so uh, I'm just going to use that to quickly press enter a thousand times uh, to star align and uh, activate the tracking. A first light is always an exciting time for any astrophotographer and I am ready. Alright guys, so uh, we hope you like those b-rolls, thanks to Avo um, here. So this lens is really heavy, so I'm, I'm hoping, I mean not, not too heavy, but I'm hoping it's not going to um, affect the balance here, but it should be fine once I'm rotating in this way or this way. But I think it's going to be fine. Uh, it looks really big here because this cover is on, but um, without it, it looks of course uh, shorter. Yeah. Um, this is just to protect. You should have the cover on. Yeah, to protect from uh, his cell phone lights and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna happen later. Yeah. Um, so we're going to wait for dark and then I'm going to point this at Ruo Fuji. And uh, I think I'm gonna take maybe five or six minute, minute exposures and we'll see how it goes. And this is F2, so I'm hoping at F2 the start on the edges will be not too bad. If not, I will go up to F4. Yeah, because you'll be bloating. Yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, with coma and stuff. So. Uh, we'll see how it goes. What do you plan to shoot tonight? I plan to shoot... Um, I have no idea to be honest. Uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, Bode's Galaxy. So M81. So, which I, I'm, I'm sure you can include M82 in there as well. Yeah, yeah. If I do it in the, the, the horizontal instead of vertical yeah. uh, landscape, I might be able to get it in. So we'll find out what is going to image tonight. So, and uh, yeah. The good thing is we have pretty clear skies. Uh, there's perfect, a yeah. little bit of a fire down that way so hopefully it doesn't yeah, you can kind of see it see yeah, like there's like layers. a little haze out there so yeah hopefully we don't get impacted by that yeah but anyway in the uh 
at the end of the video you will see uh, the result from this guy and the result from this guy <laughs> and the result from this guy yeah my results are we'll compare don't even <laughs> put your don't put your whole Dude, it's bottle side. two it's like super dark here. yeah but, no excuse. yeah but with me in it it's gonna be bottle six <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> So I found this and I don't know what it is. I'm wondering if it is a spider head because look at the uh, mandibule. But I I'm guessing it's not, it's probably from a tree but it looks exactly like a spider head, like decapitated head with like the, the claw, whatever here, the mouth, very scary. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going th very quick through the hand controller. I don't care what time it is, I don't care where I am. I just want to quickly pretend that I am aligned. One star aligned. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to accept that and we will be tracking. Okay, so now, uh, right now it's on Arcturus because the uh, mount slewed there for the star. Uh, alignment so i'm just going to manually move uh, the mount and point it towards uh scorpius where uh, my target is well scorpius slash ophiuchus so i'm gonna try to make it not too low so we have plenty of of time throughout the night i'm just gonna do it like from here and slightly move that perhaps like this and with the ball head here i can easily uh, rotate this and angle the camera any way I want. So I'm going to try to angle it in a way where the lens won't be affecting the balance too much. And I think this will be pretty good. And the good thing with the RA, unlike the 7D Mark II we're currently using there, is the flip screen. And so from here I'm going to uh, take a few test shots until I am uh, properly on target. The uh, raw future is going to fit exactly perfectly in the framing so uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, frame it really well. So I'll show you guys a few test shots right now. To easily find raw future, I aimed the camera at the bright orange star Antares in Scorpius. I took a quick test shot to focus and then several more to center the target. I used my previous image of Rolofuchi as a reference to get the best out of the faint gases on the side of the complex. So you can see Rolofuchi, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a bit more to the right, just because I know there is more gas on the left, and we'll see how it goes. I launched the images and had a really fun time with Avo. Going out to image with Dahlia is very nice, but going with a good friend in some drinks is different. The settings used were 3 minutes of exposure at f2 with an ISO of 1600. The histogram was right in the middle, so it's a bit overexposed, but I didn't care too much because this was a very dark site. And then morning came. So 
here you can see Avo's picture of M1 and M2. I think it turned out really well and uh, it's really clean looking and I really like those refraction spikes which I miss. Um, and then really quick, here is the image I took with a telescope, so the SVX130. It is just a quick shot on uh, M107, a globular cluster. Um, just I think two or three hours and that was it. So it's not really amazing, but it's just one more uh, object done for the catalog, which uh, I think we're almost halfway through or more than that. And then uh, really quick, <laughs> before we go back to the field, the lens uh, all night was fantastic. Uh, I actually put a tape here so the focus would not change throughout the night. And um, this lens really, really is insane. Yes, I did uh, F2 all night. So F2 and the stars were pinpoint all over the edges. Uh, by the way, this is not a sponsor or anything. I bought this with you know, the money and stuff. But um, I am really, really uh, in love with the lens. And I'm not, I mean, I'm glad um, I spent this money uh, on this lens. F2 and the stars are pinpoint, imagine that. Uh, most lenses, I think every lens that I have, if you go under f4, you have comma uh, on the edges, and this one is not an issue at all. f2, wide open, and the uh, the stars are pinpoint all over the place. So, yes, I am in love. All right, now let's go back to the field where you can hear my sleepy voice in the morning. So we just packed up, it's like 5.30 a.m. because uh, it gets really, really hot here very quick as soon as the sun is up. The problem is at night it was very, very cold. Uh, we were really shocked because we came here, it was super hot, we didn't take any uh, jacket and in the end it was so cold. So we both uh, froze to uh, almost death. Anyway, um, so the, the lens was really, really uh, impressive in terms of uh, um, quality in the edges. I was expecting to have to go up to f4 uh, like most lenses but at f2 so wide open uh, the edges looked at least on the LCD screen uh, completely flat so I was really really impressed so I can't wait to go home right now and check the results and really zoom in on those edges to see how the stars look and uh, yeah we only got like three hours of sleep so it's going to be difficult to drive home for two hours, but I'm looking for something that will help me right here. You guys probably know what it is already. You have this and this. Perfect. And as usual, I forgot a spoon. <laughs> so processing raw future was very, very exciting. Uh, there was a huge difference between a single shot and a stretched uh, master, a huge difference uh, compared to most other pictures. So uh, the colors popped really well. We have yellows, blues, reds, everything in this one shot and it's really, really beautiful. Next time, I think I will try again, but this time I will have guiding on this lens because this lens, although technically it should be fine uh, with just three minute exposures, uh, there should not be any uh, star trailing with a good polar alignment. But if your polar alignment is a bit off, then as you can see here, man, I think mine was, uh, we get some star trails, like very, very slight. So only when you zoom in, but when you're uh, zoomed out like this, uh, it seems like there is so many, just so many stars. And just because they're just slightly elongated, uh, it gives the image a bit of a uh, blurry slash, not blurry, but kind of messy feel. So uh, this is why I didn't really use a, a crazy workflow uh, because I intend to and uh, do it again, uh, maybe this year or the next, depending on how much time I have. But um, I really want to get this one again, but very, very with pinpoint stars and an amazing resolution. So uh, I am not done with Raw Fuji. I will get it again, probably next year. But the lens was awesome. So I'll see you guys next time and catch guys. guys.